Now to a big headline out of the city of Portland, where just hours after hearing arguments from city attorneys and lawyers representing a handful of homeless people, a judge put a temporary pause on the upcoming enforcement of the daytime camping ban. Enforcement was supposed to start Monday, not anymore. Here's the order from the court that was filed just a few hours ago. The judge writing plaintiffs made a sufficient showing to warrant preservation of the status quo so that upon a final hearing, full relief may be granted. Some of the best legalese you'll hear all night. Attorneys for the city argued that the status quo is not working, but the judge sided with lawyers from the Oregon Law Center representing Portland's homeless population. The proposed ban would not allow public camping from 8 in the morning until 8 at night. It would also block camping near schools or in parks in public parks. People could receive one warning to move every 24 hours and after two warnings, Police then would have the authority to arrest that person with penalties ranging from jail time to a $100 fine, maybe even both. And all that is contingent on the police officer being able to prove that a shelter bed is available to that person before giving them a warning or arresting them. In court this morning, those law center attorneys argue that the Portland camping ban ordinance is vague and difficult to understand. Still, attorneys for Portland say the city has the right to decide what public land can and cannot be used for. Camping, for example. They claim the daytime camping ban ordinance is not a broad ban on camping because it does not stop people from standing, sleeping, or lying down in public places. But as you heard, the judge put the enforcement on pause for now. Her order will remain in effect until a final hearing and decision is made in the case or if there's another order that supersedes her temporary injunction. In the meantime, Mayor Wheeler released a statement within the last 90 minutes that reads in part, I believe the status quo is not working, but the court's decision leaves the status quo in place. The court's decision today marks this, makes the city's work harder, but the city is going to continue this fight and we hope to get a better understanding of the court's reasoning during this litigation. Now, let's get to some of your thoughts about our big story from Tuesday night. Investigative reporter Evan Watson showed us that Portland Parks and Recreation has a maintenance backlog of more than $600 million. The director of the Bureau put it like this, growth and deterioration is outpacing investment. Simply put, there's no money for maintenance. And the money they do have is being used for projects that are already underway. And how's this for a statistic? The director told Evan that Parks and Rec estimates that one in five assets that they have right now will close over the next 15 years if they can't get funding for the maintenance backlog. Well, let's start with this email from Stephanie. She tells us, I have attended three meetings with Parks and have been told there are no funds for maintenance. PPR staff mentioned that over the next 15 years, they plan to off 25% of PPR's properties. Portland is known for its parks, and this would be an outrageous slap in the face to all Portlanders. So instead of one in five properties, like the director told Evan, Stephanie has heard it's one in four that could be gone. All right, Stacy wrote to us, so disgusted with Portland Parks, this is a department that throws the baby out with the bathwater. The system is broken and the department has never been held accountable. We have fantastic facilities that people love and just want to be fixed. Why didn't they ask for a maintenance levy if that's what they needed? It's excuse after excuse after excuse. I am not impressed with their leadership. Jan agreed. Are the residents and taxpayers supposed to find a solution to the degrading assets? Where have the Parks Department officials been while these properties decline? Seems like a job description review might be in order. And we'll end with this from Matthew. Portland residents are exhausted and overtaxed. It appears to me the choice is clear. Tax ourselves more or right-size the Parks Department. Parks needs to trim low-use, high-expense facilities in order to repair the facilities that remain. They cannot afford to provide every desirable service for every resident's wishes. It's called budgeting, and it's about time they had one. Thanks for all your comments, and remember, if you find Evan's story on KGW.com, it includes this interactive map that allows you to see all the maintenance deferred at parks and rec facilities in your Portland community.